Welcome back, guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. I have a lot to share with you. I've been getting as much footage as I can as far as food and just different activities I've had going on in the kitchen as well as in the garden the last few days to share with you. So the first thing you saw was the lard that was rendered overnight and you'll see me strain it later in this video. I think the last video I posted I ended with the fat in the crock pot and you did not get to see the finished product. So you will hear. It's been a beautiful weekend and our Monday was gorgeous. A very breezy spring feeling kind of day so of course I wanted to do everything outside. We spent as much time outside as we could and so we planted our fig trees, our raspberry bushes. I've got a few other things I've got to get in order before we plant our strawberries but I wanted to share some of that with you as well as some of the food I made this week. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. Welcome. Today's breakfast is a basic egg and sausage scramble. The sausage was gifted to me by the farmers we get all of our pork and chicken and beef from. I also have some sourdough toast to serve alongside this egg scramble. I usually would put spinach or bok choy or kale or some green into this egg scramble, but we are very low on groceries, so we're making do with what we've got. Here I'm straining our beautiful lard. <laughs> it's completely cooled and I'll just store it on the countertop in this jar and use as needed. I'm actually going to use it in this video to fry some chicken tenders. I'm super excited. I have not made buttermilk brine chicken tenders in a very long time, so I'll share that recipe with you later in the video. We had windows open all day Monday. It was such a perfect day. I'm also going to get some sourdough stuff going. I've got a brioche dough that I will be mixing first and later I will be doing the half bread flour and half hard white wheat freshly milled grain that was suggested by one of you. I'm pretty excited to see how that turns out. We had a basic lunch today, just cheese toast topped with curry tuna and some peas on the side. And then I went ahead and pulled out some leftover rice and chicken. The leftover rice is the best for fried rice. So I'm just making a quick fried rice because Hector was home for lunch and I did not anticipate that. I did not want to serve him just a tuna sandwich. I don't think that would have been enough for him. So we've got some chicken, some peas, some butter. I'm going to add eggs to this and then the day old rice with soy sauce. If this was dinner, I would definitely be chopping up onions and peppers and garlic and fresh ginger and doing all sorts of other fancier things, but it's a quick fried rice for lunch and it hits the spot, fills our bellies and nourishes us. Pretty much every Asian dish we make, I top with sriracha and sesame seeds, so that's simple. I did that for this fried rice. I was really wanting to get outdoors as fast as possible, so now that food and school is behind us, I'm going out to the garden. We've got big plans today to get this garden looking better. All the grass and weeds are starting to grow in, so we've got a weed eat, we've got a mow, we've got to deconstruct this wonky bed, see if we can make at least one small one out of the good wood that's left with it or in it, and then save the rest of scrap wood, and then we'll probably make one other bed, probably this size, um, once we make it to the store. But for now, we're just gonna deconstruct this one and get it a smaller one out of the wood that is nice still. And 
we're gonna plant some raspberry bushes over here ne next to our blueberry and blackberry and muscadine area. Not sure where, we're trying to decide that. We have two fig trees. We're gonna plant one here where our dead blueberry bush was. And there's another spot where an old fig tree was that we can plant the other fig tree. Do you remember where it was? I think Ivan knows right here. There's a fig tree. Sadly, our elderberry tree didn't have a very good year last year, and it is dead. So we went ahead and cut it down, but now that we're going to propagate several others, we could easily replace this one. Maybe it had too much direct sun, I wonder. Let's go see the other elderberries and see if they're blooming or sprouting yet. Yep, they're starting to sprout. So these are all alive. We're gonna get some of the canes. I see one right there. You see that long one too well? This is a cane. So cut it at the base and then we'll make several segments with it. So we can get several trees out of that one cane. So the trick is this, these Right there, these two little nodes, they're already sprouting. Two inches under them you cut, and then you go all the way up to the next set, which is not very far, and you cut two inches above that. So our first propagation is gonna be right here, Joel. Right there, yeah. So this stick, you literally just put this in soil, and it will become a new tree. <laughs> so, right here you Put see the, the, the two nodes the yeah excellent and then the next two two inches above that excellent so we got two trees where's the next two there you go oh it's hollow sometimes yep yeah. and then right there three trees up so this is literally how easy it is guys you put the cane in the dirt and since I have a few little ones I'm just gonna put a little companion since I don't have enough pots for every single cane and then in a few weeks there will literally be beautiful healthy roots growing out from each one of these and you can transport them to the ground and they will grow into big beautiful elderberry trees it's one of the easiest trees to propagate so if you have any friends that have elderberry trees on their property or if you see any on the side of the road hop out of the car go back with a good cutter like you saw us use you got to do it now though it's ideal to do it january through march and do this and by next year you should have a nice size little tree and in a couple of years you'll have berries and you can make elderflower cordial you can make elderberry syrup elderberry tincture there's so many yummy things you can make with the elderberries and the elderflowers are beautiful as well so i see carrots and radishes and beets all starting to germinate here and Thankfully, I've got this chicken wire around it because the chickens would definitely be eating it. Right, things are looking spiffy, spiffy. Everything's mowed and weed eated. Now we are going to take this raised bed apart and see if we can keep half of it so it's not so all warped like that. It's pretty ugly.
first dandelions. I spot this spring, so it's almost time for foraging dandelions. Our time outdoors must come to an end. I have to go in and prep dinner. I'm gonna be using my little garlic roaster to roast two heads of garlic because I plan on making some garlic mashed potatoes. I'm also gonna add some of the parsley from the garden into those mashed potatoes. And I'm cooking some pork chops that the boys brought home from the pig that they helped butcher at my friends. So we're having pork chops with garlic, roasted garlic mashed potatoes and some Brussels sprouts for dinner today. So to make the pork chops, I simply seared them on the cast iron, seasoned them really simply with salt, pepper, garlic powder, oregano. And once they were nice and golden, I put them in the oven to finish them off. I made my Brussels sprouts in the other cast iron with a lot of butter. I make the temperature pretty high and I cover it so they kind of steam but also get toasty in the butter. And this garlic is done so it's pretty hot. I had to use a paper towel to hold it but all you do is squeeze it and all of the cloves just come out creamy like butter. Mix them into the mash with some chopped fresh parsley from the garden and dinner was served. Today's weather is the opposite from yesterday's. It is pouring and it poured the entire day. So we were inside all day. I took advantage of the bad weather and we did a full school day and I did as much in the kitchen as I could. The sourdough brioche dough was rising on the countertop yesterday for several hours. Then I put it into the fridge to continue to rise overnight. And now I'm shaping it into a loaf. And I'll let this loaf sit on the countertop for the next five to six hours before I bake it later. My plans for this sourdough brioche is to use it in the morning the next day to make French toast. The other half of the dough I'm just leaving in the fridge. I might make some brioche burger buns with it or some brioche donuts with it. We shall see. My poor Ivan woke up with fever and he's been craving orange juice, pineapple, mango. So I'm cutting up some grapefruit for him. He wants it in the freezer so it'll be nice and cold and I've also got to get to the grocery store later after the rain subsides to get some frozen fruit which we don't have right now and I always get the tropical blend with the pineapple and mango which I know he'll really enjoy as he's hot with fever and craving that sweet and probably vitamin c here I am getting my sourdough ready with the half bread flour half hard white wheat and I'll bake these loaves tomorrow morning so they'll be rising all day the dough will be on the countertop rising all day and I'll probably separate the dough into two banneton baskets this evening and put them in the fridge until tomorrow morning when it's time to bake Stratas, I usually have a lot more bread to work with. Today I've only got a little bit of bread, which is going to be probably half the amount I usually need or use. I also don't have any bacon or defrosted breakfast sausage, but I do have salsa and I have lots of eggs and I have aged white cheddar. So I thought I would make a meatless strata and add some salsa to the eggs to make it more of like a huevos rancheros flavor and top it with some cheese and it turned out great. So even though we were not missing, we were missing the ingredients I would typically want, this was a great example of making do with what you've got and still pulling off a delicious breakfast.
so happy i got to go to aldi and stock up on so many things we were low on the last several times i've gone to the grocery i've just gone to grab a few little things here and there and i've not done a big trip in several weeks so this was very needed i feel very happy i'm getting uh, a shot of a funny little wind chime some young girls made when they found all these bullet what are they called bullet shells around our property and they had some string and they got a little stick and made it into a circle and created a little wind chime so i thought it was so funny i hung it up in my backyard so it's time for lunch and the best poke bowls we've made to date have tuna like regular canned tuna with mayonnaise and soy sauce i've tried salmon i've tried tuna steaks i've tried chicken but the canned tuna has been the yummiest. So we're making some sushi rice and just chopping up whatever fresh veggies we have on hand. I had some edamame that I steamed and took out of the pods and we're having delicious poke bowls for lunch. So basically it's a little buffet pile up. You get your rice, your meat, your veggies, nuts. We're doing cashews today and the seaweed, of course, the nori and any extra sauces, and it is so delicious. We really enjoy this quick, easy meal. lunch is over and I am going ahead and brining all these chicken tenderloins in some buttermilk to prepare them for chicken tenders later tonight. I could season the buttermilk but I feel like it doesn't make any difference so I definitely season my flour when I batter them before frying but I just left the buttermilk plain. I'm making an egg wash for my brioche. I'm gonna go ahead and bake it so that it's nice and cool and ready for tomorrow morning's breakfast and doing a few more stretch and folds for my sourdough to let it just sit and rise till tomorrow. Some of you may have watched the live stream on Tuesday evening on Jason Brita's channel where I was on with Leighton Flowers and Kevin Thompson and Jason. I got the times mixed up. I thought it was at 7 central time, but it turned out to be at 6. So this dinner that we're making here is after that call, close to 9 p.m. because I was determined to make the chicken fingers. So we all just joined forces in the kitchen and made it happen. We got to use our lard for the chicken tenders and I roasted some potatoes. We did not make any vegetables or salad. We just ate the chicken and the potatoes and went to bed. It was a long but fabulous day. Joelle did make some honey mustard sauce because I love honey mustard with chicken fingers and the buttermilk makes them so tender, you guys. You've got to try this. The flour is seasoned with salt and pepper, paprika, cayenne, and probably garlic powder. I don't quite remember, but I'll put the recipe I used in, in the description box. But this is the secret to tender chicken fingers is the buttermilk brine. It makes them like restaurant quality. They're so yummy. We had the leftovers for lunch the next day and thoroughly enjoyed this dinner. So because of my crazy evening, I did not put my sourdough loaves into banneton baskets the night before. I got up and I'm going ahead and shaping them in the morning instead. I'm shaping them now, putting them into banneton baskets now and into the fridge for like an hour so that they're easier to score before baking. 
I also did not clean up the kitchen last night before bed. After we ate, we just piled everything in the sink and it was really time to call it a day. Sometimes it's worth it to leave the sink and dishwasher filled with dirty dishes because we gotta rest, right? Usually I like to do that the night before the next day, but it's okay. It all worked out. I got up, cleaned the kitchen, baked my bread, and then got to make in the yummy sourdough brioche French toast. If you have not made your own vanilla extract, you've got to give it a try. It is so easy, so delicious, and probably a lot more affordable than buying vanilla extract at the grocery. I will link the vanilla beans that I buy from Amazon in the description box. Check them out. All you do is get those beans in and you can slice them long ways open just to expose all the beans and then put them in a jar of your desire and fill it up with 80 to 100 proof vodka. Let it steep for six weeks and you've got yourself vanilla extract just like herbal tinctures. It's incredible how easy it is and I think you'll really, really enjoy it. Breakfast was delicious today, a real treat. I feel like this sourdough brioche elevates French toast and it just makes it so special. It's a different flavor, a different texture, definitely worth a try. I'm getting some new kombucha going as well as cooking some turkey for the doggies just to have on hand to mix into their kibble. I really wanted to share these silicone sink stoppers with you guys because they have been wonderful. I'm very pleasantly surprised. I love how easy they are to clean, especially baking as much bread as I do when the pieces of dough go and get stuck in all those holes. It's really hard to clean them when it's like the mesh kind or the metal kind, but these just, it slides right off and it's been so much nicer to look in the sink and see a pretty clean sink stopper. I am making my kombucha. If you haven't tried making kombucha, I highly recommend it. It's very easy. All you need is a scoby from a friend or you can mail order one or I think you can grow one. I would give you some of mine if you live near me, but it really is so easy. You need a scoby, of course, a gallon of water, a cup of sugar, and I always use Earl Grey. You let it steep on the stove top and then remove the whole pot to cool overnight and then combine it with your scoby. Let it steep or ferment for about a week and you've got yourself kombucha. Then you, you can bottle it and then repeat. It's a nice, easy cycle once you get into that rhythm. I've got my uncles in town and they're coming to dinner, so I know exactly what I want to make them for dinner. I made this amazing beef pot pie with cheddar biscuits as the crust a few months ago and I have not forgotten how amazing it was. I've been meaning to make it again, haven't gotten around to it. It is a little bit of a labor of love, but it's worth it when you have the time. So I'm just soaking some roasts in some water in a pot throughout the day so that they'll defrost so they're easier to work with later.
So I am doing as much as I can in the kitchen to prep this dinner so that I can go outside and work on prepping the garden with Joelle because my compost is getting here the next day. So I'm putting the meat into the Instapot, letting it cook for about two hours, then coming back in, pulling the meat out, shredding it, deboning it, and then adding all of the vegetables, the onions, the garlic, the potatoes, the carrots, and seasonings with some red wine and bone broth into the crock pot, I'm sorry, the Instapot, and then setting it at the soup setting for about 30 to 40 minutes. I'm also gonna go ahead and make the biscuits ahead of time so that I can have them all cut out and ready in the fridge so I can just focus on the garden, come back in, and assemble the food at dinner time. When the Instapot was done pressure cooking the roast, I forgot to film any footage of me taking the meat out, but I did, as I said, just shred it, and then all of these veggies that you see me prepping here, I just dumped them straight into the Instapot with probably about a cup and a half of red wine and salt, pepper, bay leaves, garlic powder, a little bit of turmeric, and then let it cook for another 40 minutes at the soup setting. Once that was done, I was able to put the beef stew or the pot, the beef pot pie filling into my cast iron skillets. I whisked a little bit of flour into the broth so that it would thicken some and I laid the cheddar biscuits over the top and baked the whole skillet with the, the layered biscuits over the beef stew in the oven at 425. These cheddar biscuits are a must try. You can bake them by themselves or over a beef pot pie like this or a chicken pot pie. They're just a basic cheddar biscuit recipe, but the way I roll out the dough, I'm gonna show you. I roll it out thin, I fold it, then I roll it out thin again and fold it, and I do that three or four times. And then at the final rollout, before I'm going to cut them into the biscuit shape, I don't roll it too thin. I keep it about an inch thick because all of that folding the dough, it gives it almost like a croissant layering effect to where they will rise taller in the oven as they're baking. It's beautiful. Another trick I've learned through the years is instead of using a pastry cutter to cut the butter into the flour when I make things like pie crust and biscuits or scones, I just put the whisk attachment to my KitchenAid and let that cut the butter into the flour. Then I switch the attachment to the batter mixer when I add in the wet ingredients and it does the job perfectly.
to try this method with rolling out your biscuits. If you don't, drop biscuits are just as delicious. So now those are in the fridge, the soup is cooking, and I am going out to the garden to help Joelle. Our plan is to build a shorter raised bed so that tomorrow when our compost arrives, we can fill it up and plant all of our strawberries. We're also reinforcing any of the raised beds that need an extra screw here or there. And we're putting a little fence around the radishes, carrots, and beets bed because the greens are starting to pop up and the chickens will get them. I also plan to do the same with my lettuce bed, but I have to wait for the compost before I plant those seeds outdoors. So we're done working outside. I'm letting up the steam in the Instapot so I can go ahead and assemble this meal. you guys as always for joining me i hope you enjoyed the video and that you're inspired with some of the food and recipes i shared don't forget to check the description box for links and recipes god bless you all and see you next time